as the producer, when I put my producer's head on, then I'm doing, I'm going into the sounds, I'm going into the mixing of of of, of the songs. When you when you're working with other musicians, then you're getting a vibe. It's like when you do mm. when you go and do a gig. Mm. It, there's nothing quite like excuse the the phrase. Exactly. But, I'm uh, sure you get this. I'm sure that happens all the time. It right? does all the time. Good thing I registered it. All right, so be careful. Yeah, yeah. Ten pound every time you say it. The killer, killer podcast. Killer, killer official dot com. <laughs> Street Culture TV. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Let's send it up for the poll and see who salutes it. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct central London, or as central as you need to be, choose to be. You don't want to be anywhere else. This is a form of warning here. Um, big shout out to everybody that's sharing and caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend. And if you don't know, get to know. Television app for the sport and art street culture. Free download. iPhone, Android for all of your mini docs, big docs, mixes of all genres. And of course, the Notorious Podcast. We are live inside Kensal Rise Heights with a gentleman of not only an MBA, MBE, MBA, MBE stature, but, uh, you know, part of a, a wider cast of uh, soul music genre that... Uh, came out of the UK and internationally, collaborating with the likes of uh, Erica Badu and jumping on EastEnders for a stint. And just, you know, just generally being one creative starburst, it's the legendary Omar Inside the Place. Yes, bro, how are you? I'm good, how are you? <laughs> Lovely. You've done that before, haven't you? It came out <laughs> just off pack, that was perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You just, just come straight in, you know. Sure. Um, this world that we're talking about, street culture, I mean, I, I, I always heart back to an era of the 90s and dance energy, where really it was epitomised by street culture, and you were very much a part of that landscape, weren't uh, you? Well, it was uh, um, Normski that kind of set that, set the scene for that, you know what I mean? I was just, I was just going along for the ride, mm -hmm. um, looking back some of those old clips that we've done mm -hmm. on Dance Energy, The Word, um, you know, <laughs> all programmes like that, you just kind of see what people were wearing, what they were dancing to. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to believe that those... Those people are kind of grandparents now. Yeah, no, that is bonkers. You know what I mean? Yeah, and some, and a lot of those stars are coming back as well. Yeah. Is what I'm seeing. Is yeah. you know high top fades and yeah. stuff like that. And you know the clothes is just uh, a bit crazy. You say it's funny you say because there was a, a particular video. I think it's on Trench Trench Instagram that this video surfaced. Right. Yeah, they went viral. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, like, I waded in and fucking shy effects, you know, propelled the attention, you know. Sure. It's just sure. incredible. And like you say, you don't, you, you, it's hard to comprehend because the, the culture, you know, that 30 year cycle's come around and what we're wearing now is simulated to what they were wearing. I mean, you think about the 90s, I think about 10 years ago or 20 <laughs> at least, but it's 30 years ago, yeah. you know what I mean? So. Yeah, it's just a crazy cyclical thing which ha which happens. I'm if if that inspires the the youngers, the youth mm. of, of of today, then I think it's only a good thing. Yeah, it's cyclical. See, yeah, see, these are the words we like on Street Culture <laughs> Podcast. Here, um, you're so well versed in instrumentation. I had absolutely no idea that you know, in a very Prince style, you can just pick up any bit. Oh no, there you go. I There's wish, a, there we go. I wish. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I bless you, but versatility. I, I, the, vers I mean, the versatile part. Well, I just like to try lots of different things. I mean, growing up, I played a lot more different instruments. I mean, I started on the cornet, uh, then I was on the baritone euphonium, then the yeah, the baritone, then the tuba. I ended up uh, playing as well. I was playing guitar at one point, but then I've just narrowed it down to bass, drums and keys. Because mm. those are the, the elements which help me construct songs, compose music. Um, and, you know, I just keep it tight to that. You know, um, I, I just call myself a vibes man. Of anything. Vibes man, yeah. yeah, yeah. But that vibes can also translate into scenarios. We, you know, going back to dance energy, the word, um, even act, you know, acting, um, method, just vibes, just getting into it because the creativity in you allows you to just mm. apply yourself to that. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's about expression. I mean, that's what an art form is. That's mm. what we're into. You know, that's what uh, I just think creatives are about. And if it stretch, stretches, you know, across music and, and, and acting and or comedy or whatever you want, mm. then I think that's just a way of us being able to um, 
uh, let out the energy that we have. Mm. I've I've been like this for a long time, you know. I was acting in schools and mm. music in school, went music school, music college mm. as well. So uh, I've been doing it for a while. I've just been blessed that I've been able to pay some bills mm. with it, you know, especially in yeah. this climate right now. Yeah, for sure. It's not easy. No, it's not. It's not. We'll get onto that because there's an energy to that that I think we could explore. But I think just in terms of the lifestyle that you uh, you you became a part of in the music industry and and furthermore you had to be really good mm. you know what i mean like you had to zone in it's hard for people to zone in with social media is it you know <laughs> such, so, so much going on and i want to be everywhere all at once it's yeah you know getting that opportunity to zone in on those things and study well you know in in our day how old are you I'm 45. 45. I'm this 54, month. so I'm almost 10 years older. Yeah. But, in, you know, back in the day, it used to be, you know, word of mouth or pirate stations be playing your mm. your music. Like, my, my the single, There's Nothing Like This, um, went to number 54, and that was through pirate stations and the clubs and word of mouth without any uh, without any national radio play, mm. uh, without any video as well at the beginning. Um, Crazy. That's, what, that's where it got to. So it was a different, it was a different energy, Back then, you know, I kind of think that uh, in a lot of ways it's easier now in terms of being able to get your product out to the people mm -hmm. for them to be able to hear your music. Um, it's easier, but there's like thousands more people mm -hmm. trying to do the same thing at the same time. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you gotta you got to find a way to make yourself stand out mm -hmm. from the crowd. That's, that's um, one thing I, I give thanks that I didn't have to, you know, try so hard to stand out. Mm. Um, that was the one thing that I always said to myself when I was about 13, 14, that I wanted to make music that as soon as you hear the first four bars mm. of that song, you know it's me. You know what mm. I mean? So, um, yeah, that's the kind of energy I grew up mm. trying to make. Un undoubtedly recognisable. Contrary to, you know, certain TV shows that even questioned the legitimacy of your your uh, <laughs> your, your identity in front of uh, you millions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hold tight, never mind the bus guys. Oh, right, yeah, right, right, right. okay, yeah. But uh, on the Mark real. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. on the real, like the 90s, and, and maybe I'm looking at it from slightly rose-tinted because, you know, that, that this is my formative years, you understand? Yeah. But uh, identity is everything. Because while you didn't have the, you know, the the congestiveness of, of uh, social media, mm. you still had to make, like you say, whether it's the first four bars of a song, yeah. right way through to how you stand out in a in a commercial lineup of superstars. You if know? you wanted to survive with a, a, a major label in, in that commercial way, then yeah, you'd have to you had to do stuff what what they would say. Yeah. Um, but I never did that, which is kind of why I never lasted so much. I mean, I've been through about six six, seven different labels uh, mm. up to this point. You know, I had a couple of major deals. Um, but the one thing that n nobody ever uh, was um, ever able to do was to pin me down mm. and to not make, let me make my music. Maybe right in the very beginning, I was guided, you know, my my, my, my father, uh, Byron Lifehook, who got, he had his own major label. That's a, uh, That was the first release. Independent yeah, label, yeah, sorry. That's yeah. the first, how um, There's Nothing Like This first came out. Mm -hmm. He had sort of an input in you know, news people around me, but I was like 16, 17 when, mm -hmm. I first, when I first started. When I did that album, I was uh, 19, 20. Mm -hmm. That's blessed because you were in safe hands. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, that have, your dad have a record label, don't hurt. No, no. You know what I mean? But, but having such a song as well, like, wow. Well, the, the, the story about that song is, um, so I, that was the fifth single. I had four singles pre previous to that. Mm -hmm. First the first single came out in eight, eight, 85. Um, and then my dad was like, well, I think we need to put an album out now. I think you've got enough music because I was just working on music all the time. Mm -hmm. And I had all these different songs ready to, to put to the album. I didn't have like that, you know, that mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Um, and then one day I was going through my dad's record collection and um, I come across a band called The Ohio Players okay. and an album called Skin Tight and there's a song in there called Heaven Must Be Like This. When you hear this song, you just like, why is nobody making this anymore? Because at the time... Google that, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Google it. Um, at the time, uh, hip-hop had pretty much just started and, uh, you know, Acid... As, as he was happening at the same time. You know what I mean? That, that kind of thing. Where, so there wasn't much to do with live instruments or or musicians or stuff. When you listen to this song, you can hear it's bass, drums, keys, guitar, string section, yeah. and arranged in the most beautiful way, most yeah. beautiful song. I was like, I had to make something like this. You listen to, if you listen to that song, then you'll understand where there's nothing like this came from. Crazy. Mm. And furthermore, 
in a time where maybe there was a lot of um, heavy, industrious, driven beats, I mean, chopping up MPCs, mm. that made it, it cut through in a different kind of way, didn't it? Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. You know, nobody was doing that at the time. I said, oh, I, and I wanted to hear that. I wanted to hear that for myself. So why if why not make it for myself if, if I wanted to hear it? You know what I mean? I wanted to go back to old school, which is like mm. I said, bass, drums, keys, guitar. That's the that's the mm. core section. That's the rhythm section. That, that's the that's the uh, the minimum that you need mm. to, to make a good tune work. You know yeah. what I mean? Whichever rhythm that you're using. Rhythm sections all day. That's what I say. Absolutely. Yeah. The rhythm section. Mm. Um, and it. Your sound, it will, it's part of the soundtrack of the era. The, there were some things like, for instance, uh, Hacienda in the 90s, yeah. where it was all, like you were saying, house and, you know, yeah. that, kind of, that kind of thing. Um, but, but then Oasis kind, and um, Happy Mondays, they kind of had their identity within that same genre. Sure. And, allow, and it, it almost opened up the, the, the conversation in musical terms of... of more defining, era defining sounds mm -hmm. that kind of worked in accordance. You definitely had that. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, it's just like, like I was saying before, when I first started uh, making the music, I was determined to have my own sound. Mm. And that would that be within the rhythm, within the chord structure, within the melody, mm. within, I mean, lyrics, I'm kind of, you know, I don't call myself a lyricist by any stretch of the imagination. But I just needed something that was going to be going, people go, oh, that's so much mm. straight away. Mm. And um, yeah, you use whatever's around you. My first album was built on uh, the Korg M1. Mm -hmm. I think I got that for my birthday. And then uh, that was it. I was off and running. <laughs> I hate it now. But no, at the time, it was just like, it, you know, that was the, the best it. thing in the world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, explain to me then, in mm. that case, mm. the, because we're talking versatility here. <laughs> let's uh, let's go through a process. This is going to be deep uh, with Omar in the studio. Sure. Are you are you a mad scientist? Is the hat on and you're just changing hats at every passing cornerstone of of the song process? Uh, yeah, I, I, I can pretty much go into a hole um, by myself because uh, there's two ways I like doing it. I like doing it with other people in the room, mm. and I like doing it by myself. So as the produce, when I put my producer's head on, then I'm doing, I'm going into the sounds, I'm going into the mixing, of of of, of the songs. When you when you're working with other musicians, then you're getting a vibe. It's like when you do mm. when you go and do a gig. Mm. There's nothing quite like excuse the the phrase. So, I'm uh, sure you get this. I'm sure that happens all the time. It right? does all the time. Good thing I registered it. All right, so be careful. Yeah, yeah, Ten pound yeah. every time you say it. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, just being, you just know when is the right time to have people around you or it's just me. Like my my brother lives around the corner, by the way, and uh -huh. uh, me and him, when we get into our little zone, then we can be in there for hours, we can be in there for days and we can just do what we what we, what we we do, which uh -huh. is bounce off each other. Or we we almost get to the point where we want to smash each other's, each other's face yeah, in, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's that kind of, that's that energy that... That comes out in the music, but um, yeah, I, I like to tend to go with whatever sound is near me. Mm. You know what I mean? Whatever's around me. Yeah, stick into the collaboration and the the, the brotherly um, relationship that you mm. have in the studio. Mm. So that's a whole nother level of um, trust, isn't it? Yeah, in the creative process. That you, you get these, you get these scenarios where you know you get country singers like these backing vocalists. You know, if, if there's if there's a, a, a sister duo, all of a sudden their vocals are just so precise. Don't mm. know how it happens, mm. but there's something in the in the DNA, right? Yeah. Um, th th do you ever get those moments in the studio with your brother? Oh, absolutely. We, really? we, we made some real bangers. Really, uh, for, for sure. Because he just comes up with the the nucleus of the of the of the beat. Yeah. I mean, he's a big hip hop head um, um, as well, and his productions are like these, they're on a next level. Mm. You know what I mean? It's almost uh, autistic, if I, I yeah, want to yeah. say that. In that, on in the that spectrum, way. Kids, he's on the spectrum, yeah, makes love it. absolutely, but it's beautiful because it, it makes something that I can bounce off of yeah. um, and then put something to or add to yeah. as well. I keep bump, bumping that, sorry. Um, no, no, so, good. yeah, yeah, it's just, uh, we just keep coming up with stuff. I mean, and it's the beauty about it, it's like you don't need to use the whatever you've just done recently. You can use that. I mean, the last album was 2017. Yeah. The first song on there, I actually started writing that in 2003. Wow. Um, and there's another one that's 2007. But I like to put an album together where 
Yeah, you put the needle on at the beginning, you don't stop listening until yeah, it's yeah. finished. Yeah, 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 you know yeah. what I mean? But that takes a, kind of like a putting everything together like a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah, yeah. I love albums like Jill Scott, you know what I mean? Sure. First album or yeah. Tribe Called Quest, Midnight Marauders. Yeah, absolutely. These, like, just yeah, yeah. Press play, let it go. That's it. Oh, That's it. That, yeah. yeah. Um, so you get more of a production's head, you get a producer's head on when it comes to vibing with a band. I guess that's because, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of sheep herding with creative energy, isn't there? There is. But, I mean, you know, getting a band to do stuff is slightly different because you're, you're, you're getting them to perform a, a completed song. Yeah. But what my the, the, the group of guys that I've got together now, I've started doing it. They've kind of started remixing songs. I'm going, oh, that's actually quite nice. What, well, better yeah. than the first version? But, well, no, no, no. You can never... <laughs> the is always going to be the best. Better one. Always, always ALA, yeah. <laughs> um, no, uh, just, but, you know, it's just that uh, kind of energy that we have together now. I was talking about this the other day. Good. And I went, see, I went, they'll, they'll be, they shall win, name, they shall remain nameless. Well, but at I least went, off camera, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, I went to see a band playing. It was a like big, kind of big. Yeah. And no one was looking at each other. They were all like this. Nah, that's no vibe. I'm like, what? Mm. I mean, well, I'm looking in the whites of uh, my, my, my band's eyes. When yeah. we, you know, we're jumping up and down, we're yeah, yeah. smiling. We're, you know what I mean? Where's the vibe Interact- going? I don't know. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. So you always got to have that element. And um, putting that in the studio is that's, uh, or putting it down on a record is also always a, a nice way yeah. um, to get the job done, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Um, from Kent originally. Correct. No, I'm from I'm from South London. I was okay. I grew up in Canterbury. Canterbury six to sixteen is where. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I, Go, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm I'm a Sussex boy, so I'm, oh, Sussex. I'm, I'm actually my granddad's from Canterbury. So, so what are you Brighton? Yeah, no, I'm Gatwick way. Oh, yeah, Gatwick. Crawley. Okay, I yeah. call it right, right, right. Neck of the woods. I'm living in in Brighton now. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, beautiful yeah. part of the world. Man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Unless it's really windy on the seafront, then it's right. the worst place <laughs> on the planet. Just don't go out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just the sand just hitting the, sure. the deck. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, Brighton's got an amazing music scene. It does. It does. Um, it's uh, very interesting. It's very artistic. Yeah. Down there, it's the right the right place to be. Yeah. Everybody smokes weed as well. Yeah, yeah. Very useful. Ah, oh, sorry. Freedom, see? <laughs> it kind of mirrors that Bristol uh, um, uh, attitude, isn't it? Of, yeah. Uh, something about being by the seaside, isn't it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Although everybody's moved down there and now the prices have gone shot right up. But that's another podcast, another time. <laughs> How long have you been there for? Since 2009. Oh, so you've, yeah, yeah you, you, you cottoned on quick. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, to have got to the, you, know, you were getting to the nuts and bolts of this now. Mm. You, you, you were part of such a seismic push of of British talent for its time um, back in the nineties. You must have seen and been privy to so much. Some of the craziest, most imposter syndrome. Can't believe this is happening. Throw me a few. <laughs> throw me a few stories where you're just a like, few of like, I wow. I can't give you everything. If someone's got to go in the book. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, the book's to come. No, right? I yeah, mean, yeah. you know, uh, on on your travels, uh, uh, of course, I've been bumming into um, Galliano and um, um, uh, apparently nothing. Young uh, disciples. Yes, yes, yes. You know, um, incognito. incognito. Big up, Louis. Oh, all day. I tell you, I'll give you a story about that. I used to get drum lessons in a. a um, a practice room. All I knew was a practice room. I was only seven years old. And all I remember is the smell of, of fried eggs. And I love, I love the smell of fried <laughs> eggs. But I, I was telling Bluey, Bluey about this. And I said, oh, I used to get drum lessons. And he's underneath this cafe. And, and yeah. um, he goes, that's our old um, rehearsal room. I was Crazy. like, what? Exactly. I was only seven. That's so serendipitous. Yeah, yeah, wow. exactly. So we were just linked in, in, in that sense. But uh, nah, I mean, nah, I can't tell you everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but because it's Me- a crazy time, isn't it? Well, meeting meeting uh, uh, George Clinton, Parliament. That Stop was a, it. Yeah, that was amazing. I, I've done kind of every, like every gig I was doing. He was there. Uh, we were we and we did some stuff together as well. But he's a nutter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could tell you something off camera with that one. Oh, but brilliant. I'm, not, I'm not gonna do it on. <laughs> that'll go in the that'll go in the uh, the text blog later. Yeah, there we go. Oh, dude, that is incredible. Like mm. George Clinton. I mean, if you to measure up your if you if you say to yourself, you know, man, kind of in the right direct I think I know what I'm doing my career if right. I'm crossing paths with the Dons, you know what I mean? Sure. That's crazy. Yeah, I think yeah, that is that is a sign signal, you know. Yeah. Do, um, do you do do you do you um do you have faith in that 
respect is you know everything happens for every reason oh yeah absolutely yeah. um my, but you know i've been blessed in that sense that that's what i have i have a travel i have a travel god I have a travel, uh, you know, a music god, somebody that's, uh, you know, a guardian that's looking after me. Mm. Which, I, thank you. Yeah. Every day I yeah, just yeah. give thanks, you know what yeah. I mean? Because, um, you know, that's two years in the pandemic that I managed to get through and managed to feed the kids, put a roof over their clothes yeah. on their back. And, you know what I mean? That's And I, I don't think that's just me. I think that's somebody that was guiding me. Yeah. That, that was the power that's beyond mine yeah. that was helping me with that, you know? Yeah. So... Same kind of thing. So if I'm going to meet these people, that's how people come came into my um, my life. It's insane, bro. Mm -hmm. That's insane. And I I get the feeling that the m the more you do, the better you get at it, and the better you get at it, the more things will come, right? I don't know. Do, do I get better? <laughs> well, you I want just... to kill a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> well, there you go. That's right. It's a pinnacle. Uh... <laughs> exactly. What, what do you need? You cut, you cut cut all the relations. No, I'm done now. That's right. <laughs> we're, we're finished. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm still learning. I'm still learning. I'm still enjoying myself in terms of what I, I, I'm when I'm creating music and what I want people to hear and get excited when I'm doing shows and seeing, mm. you know, just loving it that people are coming to the shows now. Mm. There's, um, you know, there's no feeling like it really, you know. That's so, uh, yeah. Yeah, no feeling. Mm. You're a good person to ask about this, talking about feelings and audiences, uh, perception. You... You could be, uh, you could be, mind your own business, uh, walking into a cafe, smelling those eggs that you like, fried eggs that you like smelling, and you sit there, you have your cup of tea, you hear the music playing in the background, and all of a sudden, your tune comes on, mm. right? Does that ever age? No, <laughs> especially when I go, is that me? Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like me. Well, when did I do yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. I did so many times. You know, I do like 15 to 20 features a year. Yeah. As well. so you, you do a lot of music, bro. You, you, like, <laughs> you've done a lot of music. You do a lot of music. Yeah, I mean, I've done a lot of my own music and then yeah. add on the other stuff that I've done for other people and it's that... Uh, no Crazy. wonder I can't remember all of it, no. you know? Um, but it is, that's still a nice moment that I'm somewhere random mm. and it's just come on, mm. you know? Um, one time when I was in New York, this is kind of my favourite story of that kind, that mm -hmm. kind. I'm in New York... So you've been in New York when it's freezing, mm. you know, the snow's built up, six foot of snow. Mm. So this is when they really had the puffer jackets with the masks, with the, the puffer jackets with that, these, this on. As mm. a, and one time I went into a, a club that somebody told me to meet them there. And as soon as I walked through the door, they put on one of my songs, I think it was Best By Far. And everybody shouted, Omar. And I, they didn't know I was in the club. So that was like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> That's uh, quite a moment. Uh, I'll give you another one. Yes. For free. Please. I'm staying in um, Chelsea in New York, and uh, my apartment was above this diner. And I uh, uh, see, guess who I see sitting there? This is like half past midnight. Blow my mind. Go on. Biggie Small. Stop. I see Biggie thing. Small sitting there with like, a group of people. <laughs> But I'm a, bit, I'm a bit lean. I think I've come from a party yeah. somewhere. So I'm, yeah. like, I'm going up to a rock. He was, no, man. No, exactly. you must have thought I might, might be there to yeah. you know, do something bad. But then the girl that's with him goes, Omar, right? And I went, yeah. So I said, your girl knows who I am. <laughs> Stop it. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, that, if that isn't an icebreaker. Sure. Wow. Sure. It didn't make him any happier. But no. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, transcending yeah. different genres, times and places and people and... Yeah, it's, it, it's it's testament to music, you know, it's got staying power mm. and, it's, and it's timelessness, isn't it? Well, that's the thing that I can keep trying to tell people. That all I'm trying to do is make that music which you're listening to 20, 30, 40, 50 years later. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, so how, how do you best describe yourself, Omar? How, how, how would you describe yourself in terms of positioning, particularly of, of the beginning to now? How do you best describe your genre, your your identity, your... your your brand, so well, they they call it neo soul. I mean, right. if that's the closest thing that is to me, then I would kind of agree with that. You know, when I first started out, it was acid, acid jazz, yes, it was. and then it was neo soul, and then it was neo classic soul, and mm. people keep coming up with these different things. I, you know, my thing, the core of my music is African music, mm. which is jazz, funk, Latin, mm. reggae, and I was classically trained as well. You know what I mean? So you mix all that together, then all different kind of things are going to come out of it. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't 
try and pin it down. I just call it Omar. Mm. Come on. <laughs> Come on. They call it alternative hip hop now, which is, I guess, a hip hop that's, you know, boom bap. Eh? Uh, alternative hip hop. How's that work? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I really. Well, yeah, it's a bit of a strange time we're in at the minute. Yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. What I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. In turn, there's just so much, which is like, did I just wake up in a in a madness? <laughs> you know what I mean? All this AI and... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 it's uh, just uh, suddenly propelled a jet stream of bullshit at us. It's like it is. Technology just took up a notch in the, the years we were locked down. I heard that they gave, they've given an, an AI rapper a deal. I mean, I don't know how true that is. I don't know if they've done that to wow. stir up the pot or what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like, the, it's like the end of days or something like that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, fucked. What sign? Yeah. What sign is it? That's one of them. People don't. I, I don't think it's their fault. You know, I think Instagram, social media, and 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 the future. You know, is always dictated by the youth. It's mm. always powered by the, mm. the innocence and the um, energy. Yeah, I'm not about to go and do no dancing on TikTok. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It just ain't the one. But but the music side of things. In my mind, without sounding like an old head, there is a shelf life where I'm mm. thinking, "What's nice? You've got to be in key, bro. You've got to be in key. <laughs> like you can't, you can't have the music doing one thing yeah, and you doing and the no, other. No, yeah. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's like almost everything that comes out and it's is 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 from its um, inception, almost like a demo stage before it even reaches to you know maturity. With the public. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> does that does that play on your mind? Like because. Obviously, you'll hear things extremely subjective from a creative ear, mm. and although you understand the energy, mm. you'll get the energy because that's that's youth culture. But yeah, you must think you, there's a bit bit of you that's just like, if you gave it like maybe two years, three years, I could get I could get where you're going with <laughs> where this. Where you going with? No, I kind of look at it as an an evolution thing. I'm okay. sure that the previous. Uh, yeah, what do they call it? Yeah, the previous era didn't understand the the one preceding it. Yeah, true. You know what I mean? And that just goes on for you know decades or you know, eons of, of years. Um, I just don't waste time on that. You know, mm. like and especially I'm fifty fifty five next birthday. I've you know I'm lived the the better. I'm not going to live to one hundred and ten. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I'm not going to waste time on, oh my God, I don't get it. What's wrong with it? You know, I'm just here to enjoy mm. myself now. Mm. They're, really, they're really supposed to love one another. I love to love and love to be loved. You know what I mean? Mm. So I don't get it, but it doesn't affect me because I don't have to and sit there. And are we meant to get it? Are we meant to get exactly. it? Exactly. I, I don't question. have to sit there and, and, and um, work, work, work it out. I've got plenty enough music mm. to make myself and to, to listen to, mm. not to be bothered by mm. that. And if other you know, if the kids are into that... Um, then that's fine. We went, we went to see Barbie. I've got twin girls there. Oh, I went to see Barbie as well. I, I, I've got to give it up. I, I had to do the, the boyfriend duties. You did the boyfriend duties. <laughs> I had to do the daddy duties. Yeah. My, mine are 15, I was 16. Mm. And I was like, well, in the bits that I was awake. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man of my own heart. Like, man of my own heart. <laughs> I, I was like, what the fuck is going on here? The first 20 minutes, I was scared. I was just like, what have I I was scared. Was that, and that's probably what I was awake for. And in the last 20 minutes, I'm just like, what the hell? It's just, it, I'm like, wow. Mm. But my daughters loved it. So yeah. I'm like, I'm not, I didn't question it. I'm like, oh my God, you love that. I mean, I, and apparently they were crying at one point. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I'm not here to judge them on that. If that's what they, they're they mm. loving and that's what they, you know, they're, they're into. That's great. I don't understand it, but I'm not meant to because I'm an older, older geezer, and mm. it's, it's too much energy spent on negative stuff. You know what I mean? So. I also feel like you're relevant. I think what happens is your relevance precedes you because you're playful. You like you, you've mentioned there. You know, uh, you're you're coming into you're the elder statesman of this mm. game. You know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. what have you got to not so much prove, but what have you got to uh, you, you have got to justify your actions and you're enjoying yourself. And it's playful. Yeah. And that inadvertently is the right energy that suddenly creates relevance in yeah. everything you do, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's, absolutely. It's rare. It's rare. <laughs> that is certainly, I mean, it's only the way I can, I, I can uh, find to, to get through life, if mm. you get me. It's just to, you just go enjoy yourself mm. and try and spread that love around you. And, you know, I know, I know people that turn up to sing with their bands and they don't even talk to them. You know See, what I mean? It's just weird. like, and it's, I don't travel with them, they don't turn around, look and say, you know, what's your name? Mm. Or anything like that, you know what I mean? Like, do, do I know you? Uh, yeah, right. No, I saw a thing where, where there was two, um, those late night presenters, like asking each other questions. Yeah. And one said, oh yeah, I think it was James Corden. And he said, uh, name two of your cameramen. And he couldn't. He couldn't name them. 
rumbled. Right, oh. you know what I mean? Just like that. And it's the same kind of mm. thing. I, I'm, I'm got time for that, that kind of energy. It's just all about loving and, and love to be loved. Yeah, yeah. And that's where co collaboration comes in. I mean, like, to work with people, I mean, you mentioned George Clinton, but, like, Erica Badu, mm. like, for one, you know. And particularly at the time, like, she's she's a, a very open public speaker, but her, her, she was really pioneering the Neo Soul thing. Like, this was, sure. this, this was Blues and Souls magazine complete fodder wasn't it like right she killed it how did that come about how did that collaboration happen? Uh, she came looking for me um stop it when she first um because wow. her i mean her album came out i forget what year it came out but uh, one of her favorite songs was uh, my song little boy that she you know uh and she always wanted me to uh sing that to her every time i see her um so yeah she was talking about me on the radio and then somebody put us in contact and then uh, uh, my manager at the time, Keith Harris, gave me an idea to do a, a cover version of Be Thankful, William Devaughan's yeah. Be Thankful. And uh, I had somebody else in mind and asked them, and he, they went, no, nah, they couldn't do it. And out of the blue, got this phone call, and it's Erica. And I'm like, oh, wow, yeah, this is perfect timing. Mm -hmm. Because if you can come, and say, yeah, yeah. She just came and sang, sang the track. So that was amazing in itself, in, a, in of itself. But then... Uh, record company politics got involved mm. and some idiot business went on and mm. uh, they said I couldn't use her for for like it was and it's probably like a couple of weeks before the release of the album and they said uh, no nah, well I'm like why why not and mm. they, and uh, they couldn't give her like a reasonable excuse so I was like right we, we have to sort this out between the labels because apparently uh, I think it was Universal and Polygram or Polydor. Mm. We're having we're having uh, fights together. Oh, um, so it's nothing actually anything to do with you guys. It's just more. No, it's something. It's something. It's a higher up. It's not, I mean, if it was the artist, we, that would, wouldn't have been a problem. No. Uh, so then, yeah, they said we couldn't use her. So then I had to find a replacement. This is when Angie Stone comes in and, and gets involved now because I already knew her from something else. Mm. And I was like, look, I got this track. And she goes, oh yeah, yeah, no problem. Um. Right, so she did her version. We had that mixed. Just before we released, uh, Erica's people came out and said, oh, no, it's all right, you can use that now. <laughs> so you had you, you two women fighting over you there. <laughs> it was just great. Well, you know, it was it was crazy. I got two for the price of one, basically. You know? So, yeah, we got there's two versions of Be Thankful, um, but just because of that um, record company bullshit. It happens, doesn't it? Mm. It happens. Mm. And although it's a lot more easy to get music out, you know, once you're dealing with the big players like yourself and Erica and Angie, like these are, <laughs> you, 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 there's only one route in, mm. you know. Mm. Um, so, so, you know, that's mad, isn't it? Yeah. It's mad how, again, just going, aligning yourself even further. And that transfers into acting and all the <laughs> work, you know, again, just set yeah. skills. Just say, yeah, yeah, just... Put your hand to it, and it's and it's on. Yeah, I've I've, I've been doing the acting while I said I did stuff at school. Funny enough, I shared parts with uh, Max Beasley. <laughs> uh, Max was two years below me at school, and uh, we shared a part of uh, the Pirate King and the Pirate Spenzant. So you can imagine us in tights and <laughs> long, you know, swashbuckling and stuff like that. So That's where it kind of stopped, started. But he he really took off. I mean, as you can see, he's mm. he's on TV or on TV the whole time. But um, yeah, I've been doing bits and pieces. Of TV and film mm -hmm. and stuff like that, but there, yeah, the biggest one that came up was uh, EastEnders, and um, it's funny that a lot of people only recognise me for that; they don't know that I do music, no. which is uh, <laughs> oh man, that yeah. must be a trip. It is, it is fun, you know what yeah. I mean? It's just it's crazy because people like that that performance um, it, in its own merit. It wasn't anything to do with the, the yeah. music. Which, oh, that's uh, a, that's a hat tip. That's one of the yeah. So yeah. let's should that's celebrate that. That's, that's, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, would you would you could you, would you prefer to do one or the other, or is it both? Uh, it, yeah. I wouldn't mind being able to do both. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's not that hard. it's not that easy because uh, um, I work. Uh, you know, generally how I get paid is by doing gigs mm. and I, I get booked up for most of the year. Yeah. So they, uh, if they need you for a certain amount of time, it's hard to have that time not booked out yeah. already because you got, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, I've missed out on, uh, if uh, Death in Paradise people are watching, <laughs> I'm available, all right? <laughs> in, the, in the latter part of the year. May not have been before, but available do now. Do it now. It? No, they've asked me like four or five, well, three or four times to, to, to do it. But each time... I was just booked. I couldn't, I couldn't get it. No, I would have loved to have done it. One of them was a month in Guadeloupe. 
I mean, who wouldn't want that? Yeah, a bit of that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, it will come. It will come. So, uh, you know, it's all good. Yeah, it's all good. So, at this point, a uh, big shout out to Kenny Thomas. Um, you know. Big up Kenny, yes, of course. Lovely gentleman, isn't he? You yeah. know, um, one of the DNA connectors. I'm, I'm, I'm often surprised about, you know, with the soul scene, how interconnected, you know, you guys actually are. And mm. it's, it's beautiful, it kind of mirrors the hip hop. It's, it's a small world, but everybody knows everybody, you know. And it's a nice vibe, too. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. What's the future, my brother? What is the future, what, Omar? What we got going on? Album nine's almost finished. Uh, we got uh, Paul Weller um, is on there. Uh, India Ari pending, Legacy pending, Gigs is on there too. Stuart Zender on bass on a on, on a track of mine as well. So um, I, I'm really happy with it now. You know, I, I need to be happy before I'm about to to, to release the album. I've got string arrangements by. Chris Cameron, who Whoa. did stuff for me back in the day. Right. So this is, we're going quite ep epic. Old school, epic. Um, and just, like, you know, more of what you know Omar to be like. So yeah. I'm varied. I'm doing stuff which is different that people haven't really caught on to. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I can do it the only way that I know how. You know what I mean? Yeah. And same thing. If you put the first f a few bars on, you'll know that it's me. So How <laughs> Paul Weller gigs on the same project <laughs> this is just I, i'm the new i'm the nucleus but you know somehow oh, i mean uh, gigs calls me og uh or, or uncle that was the other one yeah, <laughs> that's, cool. that's how i'm now and uh, uh yeah he reached out to me through insta i'm like yeah my big friend um let's do something love gigs yeah, yeah. Love you, gigs. and the song that we've done together you'll say oh yeah that makes sense because it, it just works together mr weller i've been i i i i he was my first professional gig when I was 18 because I, I did a tour with him in Japan playing percussion and vocals. We did a, ended up doing a gig in um, Roller Albert Hall as well. Wow. But I kept that contact up and uh, Max kind of put me back in contact with him afterwards. Um, and we said, uh, yeah, let's do something together. And bless him. I love that guy. Love you. Love mm -hmm. you, Paul. Mm -hmm. um, he let me use his studio, Black Barn, which is his personal studio. And I basically recorded a big chunk of the album in that studio oh, beautiful. as well. So he, he done me an absolute solid. In, and it, he's the most humble superstar I know. Mm. You know what I mean? We've got three songs together, but I put one on on the album, which is it's it's a killer for sure. Somebody said that they were, they listened to it. They want to. Um, buy a Parker and buy and ride a Vespa. You know what I mean? <laughs> Quadrophenia straight down well, to Brighton. Absolutely. <laughs> That's why I wanted to take you know take it um, with him. Um, uh, uh, India, I've I've known for quite some time, but thought so this was the right way to, to get going. Mm. Let us see, just contacted me, said, well, "Have you got a song for us?" So I'm like, "Yeah, let's yeah, let's, let's okay. do it." You know what I mean? Um, I'm, I, I, I alongside of that, I've been uh, working on a TV drama based on my time at school in Manchester. Wow! Because I went to a boarding school in Manchester. I was only one of two black kids <laughs> at this school, and. Um, I, it was the best two years of my life, let me tell you that, right, <laughs> for nothing. But I thought there were some great moments in there which could be, you know, dramatised. Right? And then we've been developing and, and developing and uh, we finally got a development deal with uh, Tiger Aspect. That's incredible. So, so that's what's happening at the minute with there. I've also been talking to um, uh, John Z D. Big up, John Z. And Jade Hackett at uh, uh, Sadler's Wells yeah. about doing a musical based on my music. Brilliant. As well, wow. so there's that. Um, and we're about to come out with a single uh, that I produced, which is featured uh, featuring Joss Stone. It's coming out on Defected. Uh, so watch this space. Wow! Um, you hear this? Yeah. Lots and lots of intel for you to get in yeah. your diary and subscribe to, man. That's Big up incredible. Morgan Monroe and Lady Sanity as well, because they're on that track. They're wow! Killing it, killing it. So yeah. Again, just. Uh, delegating time and energy and it, that's there's, there's no mean feet there's three very different heads you put on it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. i can't keep still mate you know what i mean I got, there's a lot of, there's a lot of work i got to do you know what i mean and uh and it's good quality stuff as mm. well i'm really happy with how it's going thank you like i said you just got to give uh the creative forces oh absolutely all the love in the world because you know yeah. never take that for granted what's uh to, to sign off in a very Jerry Springer kind of way. What, to, <laughs> what, what, do you, what advice would you give? Because, you know, we're talking with some real deeper, I feel, deeper meanings as to how you have got to this place. Mm. And it's way beyond this podcast. It, it's to be seen. You're, you're moving in and moving. But what advice can you give? What, can you, what value can you add to anybody? Not just young, old. Just anybody, young, yeah, old. I just anybody. think you, you need to... Um, 
be re realistic about this business. I mean, it's, it depends what if you need to earn to live, or you can just you know perform without and do something else on the side of that. But just you got to be patient. Mm. You got and perseverance is key as well because you got to keep at it and at it. You know, it was like it was five years until I actually made a breakthrough properly. I mean, everything was underground. Um, yeah, everybody thinks I started, but there's nothing like this. I had stuff yeah, out before that. Right. So you have to keep, you have to keep going and try and do something that stands out for mm. the crowd. Doesn't matter, I mean, it's the hats, the hair, mm. whatever it is, mm -hmm. the podcast or you know what I mean, the products or whatever you got. Mm. Do something that's going to keep people, uh, keep you in people's minds, mm. and I think that's going to help, mm. you know, for sure. Sage advice uh, for the one and only. Thank you so much for joining My us. Pleasure, bro. Bro. My Real pleasure, pleasure bro. Yeah, yeah. I love it. it. it a big shout out to Leke as well, our yes, boy. Yes, I'm about to come check you, son, <laughs> with some niceness, so be nice. And also <laughs> Chip Shop as well, because I know you guys are friends as well, don't you? A Chip Shop, yeah, yeah. Terry Walker. Jumping yeah, Jack yeah, Frost, yeah. Terry, all yeah. the gang. Yeah, yeah. Big them up, big them up. Well, like it was our Fashion Killer Keller podcast, sharing his caring, tell a friend to tell a friend, all right? Crime don't pay, but neither do they, all right? Big up, Omar. Well, like it was our fashion. You stay lucky, people. Peace. <laughs> 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 <laughs>